Hello everyone, are you ready for another fucking adventure? I'm back here with Dragalia Lost, and I'm here with Zenrot. Oh. Hello. And I wanted to talk about some stuff that's upcoming in Dragalia, and uh, since I talk better when someone else is here, I figured I have Zen, who recently uh, is kind of back into Dragalia. He's dipped his toe in it, for sure. Yeah, I play it, but I, I'm quickly having the same issue with it that I had with it before. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like that I feel I felt like that was gonna happen eventually, just because uh, your main problems with it were something that wasn't gonna change with that update. But regardless of all that, you're here to let me tell you about some of the up stuff that's upcoming. So let's get into it real quick, and then uh, we'll talk some more about it. So. The first thing that's coming up is that there's going to be a version update, and wait, if it comes, there was going to be a summoning showcase with a new adventurer, which is, I think it's called Beautician? Beautician? Do you know? It's like one of those beautiful people who are... Yeah, Beautician. Beautician? Zardine? I think that's his name. Zard I, I, I can't... I, when you're here, I don't know if I pronounce names correctly. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I have no idea what anything is in Tregalia. I don't know how to pronounce any of that shit, so I cannot correct you. Fair enough. But either way, I'm he's... calling him Dion, it's fine. Yeah, he's coming with his own showcase, and I've talked to a good friend of mine who is, helps me out with some Dragalia videos. His name is uh, Lerp. Shoutouts to Lerp. And he believes that this guy will be on the banner that's going to be coming up for uh, Resplendent Refrain, which is going to be the first ever... Uh, uh, what the hell is it called when an event comes back? Run. Yeah, a rerun. Thank you. I can't believe I forgot it. But either way, the thing that's interesting about this guy is that uh, it's a three adventurer that's being made into a five with a completely different skin. So that's something that they usually only saved for um, big events like Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day. Uh, usually when those oh, events yeah. came came around, what they did was that they would put dudes in new outfits and be like, okay, now they have a new rarity. They usually did it with, um, so a five star would be now a four star and was easier for you to get. They did that with Xander. So you can have your King Xander in four star if you couldn't get him in five, which I'll say right now, if you can't get a Xander, I don't know what the hell you're doing. I've pulled maybe seven Xanders in my entire lifespan. Yeah, I even pulled a Xander in my short time back. I pulled a Xander. Xander's maybe one of the easiest things to get, but either way um that's usually what they do it except the only exception that i believe is hildegard which stayed a five so she she's a top premium girl regardless of anything but the interesting thing is that uh he's going to be coming back and this is the first time of them actually going like which is actually something i thought was a problem with regalia is that they introduce a lot of characters and the only way you actually learn about the characters is either they're part of the story event or you open their mana circles and you learn a little bit more about them and when you do like the little story things you learn about them but if you don't do any of that you don't know who any of these characters actually are <laughs> Which is yeah, uh, yeah. And Old I think, base lore has always been a yeah. Which is a shame because I really do think they put a lot of effort into a lot of these characters, giving them like different personality traits and all that other stuff. But you so very rarely get to see it. So I think with this, they might start doing something that was usually only reserved for special events, and they'll be like, no, now you'll get. Those, these characters will come back and you'll actually get to learn more about the characters as opposed to just flooding the game with just like, well, here's a new waifu unit, so you should pull. Or here's a new dude unit, and it's been like three months since the last dude unit was featured, so here you go, ladies. Here's your, your chance. Or dudes, if he's really cool looking. So I think it's interesting. The one thing I'm still not 100% sure on is whether or not he'll actually be a part of the, the rerun of Respended Reframe. I think it'd be good. And I think now that they've started putting more five stars into the banner as featured units, um, it seems possible. And also, Respended Refrain really needs a new unit in that uh, summon. Otherwise, there's no reason to summon on it. <laughs> just because all those units are already in the banner. So you could literally just save all your stuff and be fine with it. Uh, but let's actually now talk about uh, Resplendent Refrain. Were you still around long enough for this event? Uh, I did, I fought the Fireboy, and I fought the Windbird. Okay, so you were not. Resplendent oh, and the Kingdom Hearts guy. Okay, this is where Kingdom Hearts guy is from. So, I can, I think I can safely say this is probably the worst event in all of Dragalia. <laughs> and I, I say that in the sense of, like, that boss is very unfun to fight because he has just a buttload of HP. I think now that Light is so crazy overpowered, it might be easier to fight now, so maybe it won't take like five minutes like it used to. 
Uh, but the other thing that kind of sucks is that the free-to-play unit is kind of an asshole. So he's not very, like... A lot of times, a lot of the free-to-play units have a very specific attitude, which is, like, they're chipper, but they're actually really cool guys. This is the first time they've ever done an asshole character, and also he's a little kid, so you automatically have a growing disdain for him. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is not the event I would have brought back for the first time for a rerun. I would have either brought back the very first event, or I would have brought back uh, the New Year's banner, which had the one of the best. So, uh, so for New Year's there was a banner for and an event for I believe it was New Year's. I forget if it was a yeah, it was regular New Year's. Uh, but the three units in it are all limited, and all three units, one of all oh, no four units, the dragon, the five star, and the two four stars are all top tier units. There's no denying that they're all, like, extremely good. The Sword Boy is probably one of the best attackers for Dark, which is something that Dark's missing. The Five Dragon is the best Five Dragon uh, for Dark, period. And the only way to get her right now is to uh, be, like, uh, Mayo and win the uh, Twitter contest and be given her. That's the only way to get her. <laughs> The other one is a wind sword guy who is also an extremely top tier five star unit. He's like one of the best five star uh, dudes you can get. He's limited. And then the last one is a uh, four star axe girl who's also dark. And fortunately, there's a five star that kind of takes her role, but that doesn't change the fact that she's also very good. So that would been that would have been the event I would bring back because that's the only event that would have made me actually summon before the gala banner came back, uh, which is what is kind of on the horizon. So I don't know. The one thing that's kind of actually good about it is that everyone will get now a five, uh, a free five star cat fat dragon. There's like he's a he's a uh, he he's the free five dragon for the event. He's a giant cat, and his special is that he turns into a giant snowball, and you control the snowball. <laughs> so he's cool for that. But uh, other than that, I don't know. This is if you're so I was gonna talk about this a little bit more. So the reason I say you shouldn't summon on this one. Uh, including if the new 5-star unit is very good, is that the Gala banner should be coming back at the end of the month, or pretty close to it. So in Dragalia Loss, if you've never, or you, if you didn't play during the, the banner was up, the Gala banner is one of the best banners in the entire games. It has natural 6% rates, uh, and the last time it came around, um, it was during the old times of summoning, back when summoning was the old style of it, where the Gala banner was the only thing worth summoning on. Because even back in the old days, it was possible to get uh, five new adventurers extremely easy. Uh, so I don't know how they'll... If that thing comes back the way it used to be, which is 6% rates, it will probably be the easiest way to get uh, new units if you're someone starting out or you're someone who's coming back and doesn't have a lot of new units. So that's my advice is always just wait to see what they're going to do with the Gala Banner. But if something's not limited, there's no reason for you to summon on it. Uh, is my general thought. And that's kind of how I've been able to play Dragalia and not spend anything. Is that a lot of it is just a lot of saving up. <laughs> that's all you really got to do. Because it's not like... So you just hoard for a long time and yeah. then let it loose. Yeah. The only time I'll say you don't have to do that is if you have a lot of story left to do, in which case I would say, yeah, go ahead and summon until you get like a pity break and get like a dragon or something, but then you can stop. And that's the best time to do it. Um, and that's with the, the banner stuff coming up. And then the last thing that are kind of going to go into quick things about what's also coming is that uh, the high Brunhilde trial, she's getting her prelude, and preludes are a good way to... So the hardest stuff in the game are the high dragon stuff, uh, but the thing is is that they're so hard that they require a lot of stuff to actually get into it, but the prelude means are they're easier versions of that fight. And you don't need any of that material. So you can actually practice the fight before you actually go to the real fight. And so that's what the preludes are kind of for. And so Brunhilde's will be coming. So if you're kind of a newer player and you want to check it out, you can go fight uh, the prelude, which will be much easier. She's In terms of a boss fight, the reason I haven't fought her is, is because it requires a lot of stats. She's not hard to fight, but also your water team better be like, your one solo unit has to be over 5,000 might, I think. In order to just, not, so she has what, just like HP checks, or so every single one of these uh, fights starts with an explosion, and if you don't survive the explosion, then you don't, you don't start the fight. 
So at the beginning of the game, what she what will happen with every single one of these dragons is that a giant explosion will happen and every single person will drop down to red. And then it's up to the healer to heal everyone back to normal. And then from that point, she starts doing her routines. But if you can't survive that blast, then you're kind of fucked. Then all you're doing really is that you're uh, hurting the main team, which is people who are actually able to survive and all that. But I don't think she does that when you do a prelude. Either way, the preludes are easier and it's a good way to actually kind of get used to her patterns because the patterns stay the same. The only thing that's different is that she's just tougher. And yeah, that's something that, um, uh, you know, I might actually see if you ever get ready. I'll might take you into one of these preludes just to show you how they kind of are. But let's go down to some I of the other things. I have a 4,500 might guy. You do? All right, then we might be able to do one of Not those later. 5, 000, but he's like 4,500. All right. And then the other thing that they're saying... Tire, but I refuse to grind for a weapon, so there's my problem. Yeah. Well, thankfully, some of the changes are is that it's going to be easier to do weapon stuff. Uh, another thing that was going to be here is that one of the new... So I think after this rerun, we know for sure the next event is going to be Fire. And it's going to be... Uh, the free unit is going to be called... Someone called Zhang Zhang. She's a spear unit. All that means really is that if you have... You should start training up your... Um, your fire units and your uh, light units for the upcoming events. That's really all. It's a good way of saying like, okay, this okay, is what's going to... Marf is a fire unit. All right. <laughs> yes. Marf is a fire unit and also one of the best uh, fire units out there. So get your your Marth ready because you're about to get uh, using them a bunch. And finally, one of the last things that's come and come in terms of actual events is that there's going to be void fight. You're going to fight void Poseidon. Uh, void fights are something that, um, if you've ever, when you're doing the crossover, if you look down to, um, below the Fire Emblem crossover, you'll see Void Fight. And, um, the Void Fight is something where, uh, what's the right way of saying it? Like, Void Fights are weird because they're all miniature boss fights, but they're all miniature boss fights kind of set up to be like... Uh, they're all special gimmicks where, but some of them to don't take that long. But for for someone like Poseidon, those are the actual like, um, it's like a tier of hard, of hard events that's not as hard as the dragons, but still requires you to kind of like build specific weapons that stop a certain like uh, affliction from hitting your dude and stuff like that. Uh, Void Agni was the last one we got last time, so they're including more in there. And Void fights are something where. Um, it also requires building a weapon, but they also drop from certain uh, void fights. So what you do is that you fight one void fight until you get all the missions, and then you're able to make the weapon. You make the weapon, and then you go fight the main guy. So that uh, so void fight for Poseidon is coming, and then that will be a good way to show off the shop, which I'll show right now. Uh, the shop is right below uh, the upgrade essentials. You can find it in the treasure trade, and then you go into void battles. And the rewards for void battles give you let you buy get stuff like mana circles, it's rubies, it's honeys, it's ethan ashes, it's steel bricks, it's moonlight stones. And if you don't know what the brick does, what a brick does is that it automatically unbinds a four weapon. So if you have a four weapon and it has max, if you're at the max level and you don't want to make more weapons, all you have to do is give it a brick. And then the brick will automatically unbind it for you. And that's what I do to get my void weapons up and running. And then Moonlight Stone is something that awakens up a four dragon. Uh, from an unbind if you need to use that four dragon. But there's like a lot of good stuff inside that shop. And so that's a good way of getting like uh, some materials. Especially if you're some, I guess someone not like me. Because someone like me doesn't actually need a lot of mana stuff anymore. <laughs> I'm 100% like good on all mana stuff. But for a lot of new players it's it so much mana. Yeah, uh, the amount of mana I have is actually disgusting because I can basically upgrade whatever unit I want and I'll be fine. But for a lot of newer players who are just getting ready to go into Void Battles, that would be a good way to build up your stuff. And that shop resets every month. So at the end of the month, you're able to get all the goodies back again. It's a very good deal. And then the, uh, the I actually like, here's the actual last thing. There's apparently a new event call, coming called the, the Merciful Gauntlet. In which it is an easier event in which you fight a very fat dragon. <laughs> so, I don't know what that's going to be like. Because all they showed was this picture of a fat dragon wearing a crown. <laughs> and I looked at that dragon and I said, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> he is so happy to be a dragon. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically all that's coming. And then there's a bunch of other... Um, just actual upgrades coming which is like they'll show you your clear time 
uh you can be matched with nearby players because apparently there's nfs there's like it will like use your gps and be like do you only want to play with people in california congratulations you only play with people in california <laughs> if that's what you want uh they're improving crafting they're doing a whole bunch of uh Dragon Roost gift giving is going to be better. And this is probably actually one of the best things ever is that the adventure AI is getting even better. So a preview, the only, there's only two problems I have with the adventures AI right now. One, they don't dodge and two, they don't dragon. As of this update, they will finally be able to dodge. That's good. Yeah. So they'll actually dodge they're out of the way. Obliterated anymore. Yes, and they'll also also use Force Strike, so you can finally use units that use Force Strike, because there's some units like Fritz who have a Force Strike that like paralyzes, and it's like an AoE paralyze for the entire enemy, but the AI never uses it. So now you can finally actually use those kind of units. And then, of course, they'll be able to uh, dodge more. So that's, I would say that's uh, pretty good. The only thing, again, I'm missing is now that if they can go Dragon... I can fully do certain events and not have to play at all. <laughs> that's the whole of <laughs> dream. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's coming up next for more Dragalia. And um, like I said before, the thing about uh, the what? So what? What do you summon now that the fate? Uh, th not the fate. I keep calling it fate. Fire Emblem crossover is going to be ending. Is that you really need to hold on to your stuff, and if it's not limited, then you're fine to not summon. Uh, which is kind of a weird thing because I know that many gacha games are built around the fact of like I need to summon because I need units to beat this but very rarely it's it's much better to play the long game and wait for a gala banner or wait for their limited unit because as long as those units are in the banner you can always pull them at any time and there's no fault at all for like actually going for them which is actually funny because a lot of times what will happen is which i think this happened with me with one unit even back in the old days where i summoned for a specific unit didn't get her next banner came around got her first multi and did not get the actual featured unit i wanted <laughs> so i don't know this is tradition yeah so that's that's everything coming to Dragalia Lost. Uh, thank you for Zen for being here, so I could actually have uh, me talk normal as opposed to be all whispery for every video. It's okay. Yeah, you you get a little whispery when you're by yourself. It's true. You know what's the funniest thing uh, now that we're back? Because I realize, like, I want to also thank everyone out there who watches the Dragalia videos and also have been giving me some tips about how to better showcase my stuff. One guy had a very good um, tip, which I should have realized when I was recording it, which is if you can't show off the skill, maybe re-record it <laughs> so that you can actually show off the skill that you're trying to show <laughs> off, which is what I did for Fjorm, is that I, I hyped up her fucking... Uh, I've hyped up her skill, too, which is a giant, like, uh, wind barrier that you take damage and then you deal it back. And then the first time I tried to do it, I got stunned out of it and didn't do the move. You just posted it anyway? I posted it anyway. Well, it's also because I never do <laughs> showcases. So I was like, oh, you're right. I should do that. So thank you, everyone out there, for giving all the comments and for watching. Also, thank you for everyone for watching that Marf video, even though it begins with me going, one two three hello everyone <laughs> so <laughs> jesus christ yeah uh again i'm really trying my best everyone <laughs> i'm genuinely <laughs> trying fucking take you anywhere <laughs> all right everyone we'll see you for another for the next video of uh dragalia lost say goodbye son everybody